Hi, my name is Mark Frozen and I'm about to show you how you can sharpen your hooks using the Nash Pinpoint hook sharpening tools. There's no other way of fishing in which the sharpness of the hook is so important, like when you're fishing for carp using a herring. For example, if you would fish for pike and you see a float going under and you strike, you're setting the hook basically with all your power and the force you put in your, into your rod. With our style of fishing, the carp has to hook itself and the sharper hook is, the more likely it is to do so. So now let's go into the first step on how to sharpen a hook. You take your hook, you got your vise and you see on one side you got an arrow. This is the side that we use for opening and closing the vise. You just put in your hook pretty much as far down as you can get it into the vise until it's touching uh, resistance. And then you can close the vise using just your two fingers. As you can see, I put in the hook as low as possible into the vise. And the reason for this is that it's sitting way more stable and won't start to wobble as soon as we apply some pressure. Next thing we use is the diamond file. This file has two different sides. It's a fine side and regular side. The regular side will usually be the one that we're working with. Just when it comes down to really small hooks, like say a size 8 or smaller, you might find it more convenient to just use the fine side. But usually we're starting with the regular side. So on this diamond file, you will find one smooth side, one smooth edge. You will find the same edge on the vise. You can then place your diamond file on the vise and use it as a guide. It's very important to not be too aggressive using your angle because you don't want to shorten your hook point down. You just want to make it slimmer and therefore sharper in the end. I then use my thumbnail just to give it a little bit of counter pressure on the hook and start with one, two very gentle and careful strokes. There's nothing about speed or force or power or pressure in it. It's just letting your file go over the metal and take away the material. So after two strokes, you can already see that we remove the coating from the point of the hook. If you see that the whole side of the hook is uh, starting to, to shine and you remove the whole coating from one side, it's basically done. The more strokes you now uh, apply to the point, the shorter it gets. And this is what we don't want to do. So what I do now, instead of working on the other side using um, my good hand or my strong left hand, is I turn it around. And this way I can now on this side pull the diamond file towards me. And again, after one to two strokes, you can already see how the coating has gone. A great way to see that you got the level and the, uh, the, the angle right is if you see that the coating um, is starting to go away, starting at the barb and then towards the point. With each stroke that you do, you'll see how the uh, coating gets removed more and more and more towards the point until you see that finally the whole point is starting to shine, the uh, coating is removed and the side is done. Now we are working the top section of the hook. What I like to do is I get everything now much closer and I like to hold it in my hand because now there's even less pressure involved so I don't have to stabilize it all that much. I just get it real close so I can see it and uh, start to use the fine side now of the file. Obviously there's a difference between hooks with a straight point or hooks with a beak point. We, here we have a hook with a beak point so we have to follow the contour of the hook to get an optimum result. If it would be a hook with a straight point we would just start at the barb and gently without much pressure move towards the, the uh, point of the hook. So as we finished both sides now, 
and we want to work on the top section of the node, another tool comes into play and it's the LED magnifier. Um, the magnifier features a 40 time magnification which really helps to bring out all the details you want to see when you start to sharpen a hook. The more experienced you get, you might find yourself using it less, but especially for beginners, a good magnifier makes all the difference because the differences and changes that you want to see or the results that you want to see are just too small to see them with your bare eyes. I switch on the LED, which is very helpful if you're using it inside your bivy or in poor light conditions or at night. I just get an, a first idea of how the hook point looks. So I immediately see that the hook itself is not perfectly sharp. But it's important to get a first idea of how it looks so we know how much we have to work on the point in. I place the file at around the barb and will follow the whole contour of the hook and just gently follow it. And after two strokes, I check the result that already looks pretty much perfect. So now we're using the stone file. The stone file is, uh, serves two purposes. One is to put like the last percentages uh, on your hook when you're sharpening it. But you will also find yourself using it um, when you left your hook in or your rig inside the water for say 24 hours and you uh, reel it in in the morning and you will find that your hook point is a little bit dull. You can use the stone files just to freshen it up. Just give it one, two strokes on each side and you will feel that the, the perfect sharpness comes back to light. So what we did until now is we started with a round hook. We took away both sides and we worked on the top. So basically we changed the round profile to, let's say, a square shape. What I do is I wetten it up a little bit, take a bit of spit or you can also put it in the water if you're sitting on the lakeside. And instead of working in a 90 degree angle like we did before, I'm just placing it on these edges that we created in a 45 degree angle. And again, no pressure involved, just the weight of my fingertip on it and just follow the contour of the hook. Again, I turn it round towards me so I can work the other side properly. And in the very end, I just run it over the outside of the hook. So that's basically a sharpened hook. So now that this hook is pretty much perfect, there are a couple of things you can do to keep it that way and uh, basically uh, prevent corrosion. First thing are these markers. Um, we basically have three different colors to match the lake bed. What these will do is they will create a barrier between the naked steel and the water. If you're coloring your hook point like this, you will find two results. A, it's protected and B, the ink of these markers takes away the shine of the hook point, which might play a role in your fishing, which is something that you have to decide for yourself. But it's um, a nice side effect of protecting your hook points in the first place. However, if you're putting out a rig on a spot and you know that you want to leave it there for 24 or more hours, we've got another product that you might be interested in, and it's the grease. The grease is a very sticky, product that if you spread it between your fingers it's very easy to apply just run it through your fingers or run the point of the hook through your fingers and this will enable you to leave a hook in the water even for two days or three days without suffering too much you cannot really prevent corrosion completely but you will extend the time that your hook stays sharp massively so this demonstration just took a few strokes on each side to get to a perfect result. 
don't mind if it takes you longer or you have to try a few times until you get decent results. Um, there's no right and wrong with hook sharpening. It's depending on many, many different uh, factors like the pattern of hook you're using, the size of hook you're using and your experience. If you're using all these tools for like a season or so, you will see how your results will increase massively and that you're basically able to sharpen a hook in your sleep. It's like just tying your shoelaces. In the beginning, it seems so difficult and you can hardly explain how to do it. In the end, you do it without even thinking about it.